play. of my life, I don't know, but it's um, for sure very, very important. Um, you know, as I say, it's, it helps a lot the last, the last competition that is a team competition and because you get a lot of energy from your teammates, from the whole team and then the crowd is different and I really enjoyed playing today. It was, uh, was a great match. I started off really well and obviously in the second set he raised his level and the third set, I, I, I just tried to, to hold my service games and, and, and waiting for a, for a good opportunity, which arrived on only five all, and I took it. And obviously, it was a very crucial uh, match um, for for the whole team. And at the end of the match, I was really happy for for the team to be at least able to to play a deciding doubles, and you know we played really good. And I think it was a really positive positive day today. Yannick, uh, I just wanted to ask you about the three match points that you saved at 4-5 in the third set in the singles. Can you just talk us through what was going through your head? How did you remain calm in those moments and what were you trying to do in each of those points? I know that it was a really uh, important, obviously, um, important game. Um, we, we changed not for so long for new balls. So I knew if I'm going to serve well that maybe I have some free points. But I had to stay in the present moment. It was love 40 and he missed a quite easy backhand, which, which gave me a little, a little bit of confidence and belief. And then after I served twice, really good. And, um, and nothing, you know, after this kind of games, you, you, your, your energy level and then mental <coughs> level, it's, it's racing. And I think this helped me today. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone else can maybe say they've beaten Novak Djokovic twice in, in one afternoon. What does that achievement mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. Obviously, before the match, we, we were talking um, that it was a really important test today, you know, trying to understand what, what to expect before the match. And then, then I think we, we made a good, uh, good tactical. Um, moment also before the match and, and obviously playing it is a little bit different but I think I have to be really proud about how I handle the situation um, and as I said it's, I'm just very happy for all of us for the team and, and tomorrow we have a great opportunity um, we know this but in the other way we, we will try to stay as, as relaxed as possible you know keeping the smile in, in in our in our head, which is important also, and then also to be happy to be here. No, it's uh, not so many. Um, for me, it's it's the first time that we can play a final in in, in, in Davis Cup, which is it, it means a lot for us. One last question in English. Yeah, uh, uh, you just looking forward to the final and to the guys, please, as well, and the. Uh, the Australian team that you're facing, you'll be playing De Manor, presumably, in the second match. And um, you've got this extraordinary hold over him. Uh, I think they're going to take one set off you. How much of an advantage do you think that is for you? And what confidence does that give you? Well, we don't know who is going to play. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we have to decide. We have to. We have to, you know, I. I have a lot of hours in my leg, uh, this I know. Um, if I play against him, it's, it's going to be different. You know, finals, as I said, it's always different. But let's see, it's, uh, it's his decision. Um, he's, he's, he's the captain of the team, and so he can, he can answer you that. <laughs> Thanks, Yannick. <laughs> so, uh, mm, no, obviously, it's our. Uh, 
point of power. He, 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 Yanni give us a lot of energy, give us a lot of confidence uh, in ourselves, obviously. He's a great player, but he's not only a great player, so he, he's a great person, that's what I like. So, yeah, he, he's probably in the first position to play tomorrow. Strong, different, uh, this, uh, yeah, different from uh, Serbians. Maybe more, uh, maybe closer than um, than uh, Netherlands as singles and doubles. But still, we have to take care of us, thinking about tomorrow, enjoying today, but focus for tomorrow. So head uh, head to tomorrow. We switch into Italian for four the Monday Italian. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Can you hear me okay, Eddie? Yeah, I can hear you. Wonderful. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we've been having little chats over the last 24 hours over what stream and, and what streams we might or might not be able to find. Um, but don't worry too much, especially on, I mean, it's not day one exactly because we've had qualifiers. In fact, we still do have qualifiers on the men's side, but it is mm. day one for the first round proper. And um, yeah. I've got Sumit Nagal and Common Wong, and I've also got um, Peyton Stearns and Wang Yafan in my headline or my title. But on a day and in a moment like this, we can be a little bit chaotic and just talk about whatever tennis is in front of us. But Eddie, you gave me some good news a minute ago and said that you found a Nagal Wong feed. Yeah, I've got one here now. So it's uh, Nagal's one up, one, one game up, and then it's 30-15. Wong serving now, uh, so yeah, it's a big match for both of them because if you know, who took the first game? Nagal. Okay. Nagal. Okay. For um, stream just, just, just let's just dwell for a second, and, and we will if we get break points or or something crazy happens, and we have seen one or two crazy things already happen on court in Miami. We'll probably get into that a bit later on. Um, just tell me something about Wang Yafan and maybe even my pronunciation. Uh, uh, she's the girl that beat Emma in Emma Hadukano in Australia, am I right? 
Yeah, yeah, that was uh, quite a match, that one. Yeah, three sets, and uh, she worked hard to dig that one out. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a good match, that one. Uh, yeah, she's uh, a player that's um, done... She's on the way back up now because uh, she stopped playing, basically, because um, being from China, it was quite difficult with the COVID restrictions and everything. Um, okay, yeah. And I think she got married as well. Okay. So, uh, she yeah, so, like, um, before COVID and that, she was in the top 50, I think. And then, uh, yeah, she's basically had to, uh, since she stopped for, like, six months and had to work her way back up. And she played a lot of matches last year. So, and, um, yeah, she's won a lot of matches from ITFs right up through. And now she's back in the top 100. So, what's her ranking? Now, like, 60-something. So, um yeah, so she's um, a player that's also in a good good place at the moment. Um, Starns as well, just recently. Uh, well, she just had a good match against Sabalenka, which, which uh, she, she maybe could have won, but then she... Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, she had match points, didn't she? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, she did. And... Uh, yeah, so this match is quite interesting because I think that um, probably she'll be um, Stearns, even though she lost, she'll be feeling quite good after that a big performance like that in you know in front of a home crowd and everything. But uh, Wang, she, yeah, she's actually had a pretty good year uh, and uh, started off this year well. So I think she got to when she beat Radicano, she got to the third round, uh, and that was and then she took. Uh, Zheng Chen Wen, right? She took mm -hmm. her to uh, a tie break. She lost the match, but that was the third round, and that was her best slam performance. So yeah. I think that you know she's she's probably just uh, feeling quite good at the moment uh, overall. So I'm not sure how this match is going to go. I think it could go either way, but maybe yeah, it's hard to predict to be honest. But um, yeah, because both of them have had you know moments, let's say in twenty twenty four. Four. Um, I'm also showing on the screen right now some of the latest scores in the men's qualifiers. This is, I believe, the last day of mm. the men's qualifiers. And so they will begin the first round proper tomorrow. I've got right now Blinkova Yuan on my screen. Uh, Blinkova, of course, um, she's had moments in 2024, probably none more so than that dramatic tiebreak against Elena Rybakina. Uh, in Australia, if those of you just tuning in, make sure you do hit the like button. But yes, of course, that was 2220. And uh, I'm pretty sure there won't be too many high profile um, tie breaks that go that deep, uh, if you like, especially deciding set ones. Uh, she's just pulled out a nice winner. She's already a break up on Yuan, by the way. And Blinkova is somebody who I saw close up in Berlin last year. Um, somebody who kind of plays lights out tennis all the time and just sort of hopes that it works out, if you like, and um, from time to time it does, and it certainly did against um, uh, Rebecca that day, although that tie break was a little bit more nervy from her than the decisive tennis that we often see and we are seeing right now. She's a, a break up on one. Um, back over on the men's side, uh, we've got four matches currently under play. As I said, this is all four are placed in the first round. Sabot Vilt against Grenier, that is on serve, one love to the Brazilian. Uh, Sabotville, of course, will be familiar to many after that dramatic win that he had over Daniel Medvedev at the French Open last year. Martinez and Walton are on serve. Deja Wolf is already a breakdown on Coprivron, arguably the most high profile of the eight players in action right now, albeit that his ranking has slipped somewhat. Mm. So uh, JJ Wolf has had injury issues, but has also um, not won too many matches of, of late. Uh, Nagal against Wong. Common Wong is someone I think not many people, Eddie, would be too familiar with. Uh, is he somebody uh, that is a product of the Rafa Nadal Academy, or did I just randomly see them practicing once together? No, that's right. Yeah, he's he's a product of that academy, and uh, he was had the fortune to practice with Rafa recently. Yeah, uh, I guess not many too people many people have done that recently, but uh, yeah, so. Yeah, he's definitely a player on the up. He's had some good results recently on the Challenger Tour. He made a uh, maybe two or three finals 
But okay. yeah, he hasn't he hasn't won one yet. But uh, he's only nineteen, so um, yeah, he's a interesting player. Uh, but uh, he's you know he's still a bit raw. I think he's got like a a bit to learn in terms of like you know match play and and decision making and things like that. But yeah, um, yeah, uh, he's a player I like to watch actually because uh, when he's plays well, he's 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 very good. Yeah, but. Uh, I saw him actually play in Hong Kong because um, I was in Hong Kong for the ATP 250 there in January and okay. he lo- lost to who was it there? Uh, it was um, uh, what's his name? Italian. Uh, Fonini? No, 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 no. Um, um, Musetti? Yeah, Musetti. So it was Musetti, yeah. It was a pretty good match but it was, it was two close sets. And I think he was, yeah, I remember him being breaking back and yeah, but it, yeah, um, but it was a good match. But uh, yeah, I think he's definitely someone that has a potential yet yeah, to, to make it onto the tour, uh, the main tour soon. But uh, yeah, I mean, this match here is a huge match for him because this is, he got a wild card here in, in Tequales okay. and uh, he's going to, yeah, so it's his first chance to actually play the main draw of a, a major. Uh, sorry, not a major, a, a Masters. Yeah, a Masters. Yeah. Uh, so, I, funny enough, with Coleman, the uh, the thing that struck me the first time I heard of him was a few months ago, as I say, during this this period when Rafa Nadal was intensively practicing ahead of Brisbane, I think it was, but but still back at his academy. And I think Coleman had a. In fact, I know Coleman had a fall, and you hear Rafa say something like. Is are you okay, Coleman? And uh, it's like, oh, okay. I wonder who this guy is. And I think he'd also posted that particular video clip on his Instagram page. So mm. a combination of those two or three things made me very quickly aware of who Coleman Wong was. And therefore, every time he's appeared uh, on my radar since, such as when you tweeted, I think it was yesterday or the day before, well, sometime in the last few days, you tweeted, of course, that he had been uh, given a wild card. Um, I, I will touch on something that I, I have kind of uh, uh, avoided, if you like, on social media the last few hours, which is the sad death of mm. um, Irina Sabalenka's uh, boyfriend. I must admit I hadn't wasn't familiar with him, although I'm now aware that he was a, a hockey player. Mm. Uh, I, I am awaiting news in terms of her participation in Miami. Uh, I uh, do fear, um, bearing in mind how certain uh, people are on social media, how they will react to whatever her decision happens to be uh, regarding her participation or otherwise. But we'll we'll see what that happens when it when it comes to it. But um, yes, uh, a real real sad turn of events for, yes. for both the player and of course his family and, and also Arena Sabalenka. Um, but I. I, I, I was a bit reluctant to do too much on that because, of course, it, mm. one of those stories that was sort of dripping out in terms of yeah, like drip feeding on social media. I mean, yeah, it's obviously a really horrible thing to happen. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd be surprised, to be honest, if she plays now, but uh, I don't think she's going to play. But, um, Me too. But whatever she decides, that's up to her. I mean, yeah. But uh, I, I, I was thinking, and, 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 and I'll think, because I don't want to dwell on it too long because I think it's, you know, one of those horrible things that has to be dealt with. But um, uh, I was thinking about um, Michael Schumacher, the Formula One driver, and there was a weekend, I think, just after his mother had died, and, and he chose chose to race that particular day. Um, I, I guess he found it sort of a, a way of therapy, if you like, of, of getting back to normal. But mm. when you're looking at a tournament where you're playing day in, day out for best part of two weeks now as these tournaments are uh, i think it's even trickier yeah. um yuan is 40 15 up on her server she looks to try and get uh, on the board uh blink of a, uh, as i said did uh consolidate uh, uh zhang is already down to saville by the way can you elaborate a little bit on on zhang by the way um the girl who's up against saville right now uh, she's down against Savile, right? So she's yeah, too loud. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, she hasn't won a match in 
was it like something crazy, like eighteen matches or something that she's oh, really? I want to check. Um, I mean, she's she's more been playing doubles, right? I think she's playing doubles a lot, but she had a bit of a tough time. Yeah, so she's, I, I think it's something like eighteen matches in a row that she's That's lost. a lot of defeats for the thirty-five year old. She's currently ranked uh, seven hundred and eleven. Is that right in the singles? Yeah, I, I guess that's uh, she must be using her uh, protected, protected ranking. ranking yeah. yeah, so that's a, that's a hell, and she's got a, obviously a, a first round scenario there. I'm just going to have a quick look at um at her results. Is that, is that right? 111. I'm just just trying to get this right. Um, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. She had some personal issues or something, but yeah, she's she was struggling, but. Uh, uh, yeah but she's yeah she's still playing doubles right so she's she's what's her i forgot what her yeah right is. i think she's doing okay in doubles ranking yeah right yeah so yeah but uh yeah she's totally falling away in the in the singles so she has a career high of doubles of number two that she got to in july 2022. Mm -hmm. anyway um uh she uh yeah is in a real rut when it comes to uh results on the tour at the moment um and other things going on i see uh wong is actually up uh is it wong or wang you found wong uh, <laughs> uh, and you, you mean, on the chinese and i know you, i know you live in wong, wong, yeah wong yeah yeah wong i guess it's i mean i would just say wong yafan but i guess it's more like a it's probably something between like a you know wang and and wong but like <laughs> yeah think, right yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean yeah yeah, so that's just, uh, but I, I'm not a Chinese speaker, but yeah, that's, yeah, I think they say it like that, like Wong, Wong Yafan. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, still on serve with Nagao and Wong. Oh, good. Yes, yes. Do, do, do interrupt me at any point. Please don't be afraid. I'd rather you interrupt me to tell me that there was a break or something crazy going on. Um, yeah, just maybe have a quick look at that match as it, as it progresses over the next few minutes. Um, I see that Nagal, at least on my uh, Google feed, is uh, two all and, and, and 30-15. Nagal, of course, is, is having a pretty good year. He first came to my attention, I think it was at the US Open in 2019 when he played Federer in the first round. Um, I think he might even have taken a set, but I'm, I, I could be deceived there. Um, and, of course, he, he filled in, if you like, for Rafa Nadal. Uh, at the first round in the last tournament in Indian Wells after Rafa pulled out. And so yeah. he lost, I think, in straight sets to Ryanich. Um, but Nagal also, particularly this year, has been a, a special year because he's entered the top 100, hasn't he? Yeah, he entered the top 100 uh, for the first time. And especially it was big for him after having to spend, you know, several months out th with injury. And then, yeah, he had a hip surgery. So yeah, yeah, managed to work his way back and well into the top 100 for the first time. Um, so yeah, that's and then beat uh, Alexander Bublik in Australia. Yeah, that was his uh, a big big moment for him being a seeded player because <laughs> it had been yeah. however long it had been since a, an a Indian player had done that. So yeah, so he's a uh, He's sort of flying the flag for India at the moment in, in singles because uh, yeah they don't have too much going there at the moment but uh, they got a lot of doubles players because uh, uh, Bopana and, and and so yeah but uh, yeah so he's doing well at the moment but uh, yeah also a big you know because last time he got in to uh, Indian Wells via the lucky loser thing yeah. after Nadal pulled out so. Um, he'll be hoping to actually qualify directly this time because um, I guess there's I guess there's still a possibility though if he do does lose this match as well that he could get in as a lucky loser again because his ranking is it's um, it's usually like the yes the top ranked players that get the priority right so like the, yeah exactly so he might do it. we'll see but uh, he'll want to do it you know properly and I guess he's the favourite bearing in mind his ranking and, and his form. Yeah, he's definitely in terms of like consistency. Like as I say, a common one, 
he might have a higher ceiling and he's got like uh bigger weapons and all that but he's quite erratic Whoa. sometimes yeah and he's you know that's you see with a lot of young players he, he likes to try and maybe pull the trigger a bit too much you know uh with without that control that you maybe need sometimes whereas you know at the moment N Nagal very good from the baseline and he's just very consistent at the moment for his level so but you know it's <laughs> in one match I wouldn't be overly surprised if Wong managed to pull it off but yeah so what I detect from reading between the lines so to speak is that that maybe Coleman will go on to have maybe the more uh glorious career if you like but right now at this current point in time you'd you'd fancy Nagal to prevail but but one with those weapons that you touched on uh may well um uh, spring a surprise uh jj wolf remains a breakdown uh walton and martinez and say what and grenier uh do remain on serve uh blinkover here by the way blinkover although up this break uh this early break it's not been plain sailing for her since she was pushed to deuce uh in her previous service game and she's at 30 all again on uh, her service game here so mm. um and she's just now gonna have to face a break point after a forehand error so whatever uh is going on it's it's not despite this early break and, and seemingly at least in terms of the scoreboard plane sailing the actual details within each of her service games have been much more tricky so yeah that match that um yuan had with with Emma Raducanu, I, I I think Emma was a may have had some sickness issues that day, um, mm. and have we got a oh we got an ace for Blinkova, so it's juice. Um, yes, there has been. I remember um, Emma. I think uh, was a bit ill that day, but that's nothing to take away from Yuan, who was who had a good good combination of being solid and a little spectacular, where just when needed. I mean, she probably didn't quite have the fireworks that Emma was capable of producing. Mm. Uh, on occasion but um she was she hung with emma in those moments which was quite impressive and yet and then of course when emma was off and was a bit erratic then uh yuan was was very much in charge mm. yeah that was yeah she was working very hard i remember that much and uh yeah she's a she's a you know tough player and you know she'll work hard get a lot of balls back and she might not have the big weapons but she's she can counter punch and so i think that's you know against players that have a bit of firepower or are trying to uh be a bit more offensive she can actually uh get results sometimes so um yeah what's the score now sorry it's uh so it's two one to blink of a but we've got another break point i mean i'm looking at my screen i'm looking at my tv rather than the actual scoreboard on on the on Google because I know that sometimes Google's slightly ahead. But we're back to Juice now, and Blinkover saved a second break point. Blinkover in charge of the point. It's kind of yeah, maybe not surprisingly, bearing the description I've probably given for both players. Uh, it's kind of on Blinkover's racket. We just had a moon ball there from Yuan, for example, but the moon ball had nowhere near enough depth on it, and a moon ball without depth is um, is, is problematic. Let's say. <laughs> hmm okay yeah i was just looking at the 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 wang yeah fan yeah so she's 15 30 and stern serving oh is she okay so uh but still yeah blink of us up a break but other matches on serve and then savile though is up a double break yeah that, that run is now for love uh that run that we were just touching on and, and her protected ranking yeah it doesn't look like it's going to end soon yeah yeah and, and and 35 years old um yeah and i mean we've got a few players in various ruts on both sides of the tour i think did i see that schwartzman picked up a qualifying win uh or did i dream that let me let me see i think i saw that he picked up a win because it was over my that's right yeah so he's through um he's through to the first play. round is he no he's through to the to next be, final yeah. round of quality so you have to play render now oh okay um yeah, well, that then, be easy. yeah so he beat zachary schweider the american yeah yes yeah, so, yeah i mean i'm always amazed when i mean so many players that 
that end up going away from the the game for a bit for various reasons, injury and stuff, and then they really struggle to get back up there. So I'm always impressed when players manage to actually, you know, hit the ground running and get back on top. Because I mean, Schwartzman now he's what was he top ten at one point, right? So um, yeah, I think he might have made the ATP Tour finals, um, maybe in 2020. Uh, Grand Slam semi-finalist, Rome finalist, beating Nadal en route that year, was also beating Dominic Team en route to those those French Open semi-finals. That was the the winter one, and uh, Team comes to mind. Blinker was held by the way for three one. Team comes to mind as well when we have these kind of conversations mm. too. I, I I think with with injuries to some extent. Well, I mean they're two different, very different reasons and different things that are going on with a player, but. I look at a year as being a, a significant moment. So if we don't see a player play tennis for a year, mm. um, it's like, okay, that's a long time. If there's a projection to come back the following week after a year or the following month, and that was always part of the plan, or there was the off season, you know, they got injured in November, for example, badly, and then they plan to come back in the January of just over a year later, fine. But you, you get the idea. And bad mm. form as well. When we see a, a player's form plummet, there is a point where we have to go, I don't think they will get back to where they were. We are way beyond that mm. point with Jäger Schwartzman, and we are almost certainly beyond that point as well with Dominic Team. And I think Team has suggested that basically if he doesn't get some results this year, and I don't think we, he's talking about US Open wins, French Open finals, but good results, getting to finals, of other tournaments, for example, uh, this will be his last year on tour. Yeah, wow, that would be. Yeah, That's I mean, said that so. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame as well because it's it was, you know, he had the physical issues not that long after he won his his only major. So I mean, yeah, I mean that's just it. So we've got we talked earlier about Ryanich. We talked earlier about yeah. There's so many players that have, have fallen away and then they're just, you know, Kyle Edmund as well. Uh, he's struggling now and, well, yeah. he's grinding, grinding away at ITF and challengers now. So uh, I'm not sure he'd be able to get back up to, be, uh, well, I'd be, if you can get back into top 100, I think that'd be going well. So, but, oh, you know. that'd be stunning. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, he definitely falls into this category because, again, he was out injured for. I don't know, 15, 18 months, or have I got that wrong? A long time. Yeah, I feel like he's had a couple of periods out. Yeah, so it's just... Um... Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you're if you out for a year or, or 18 months and then you come back for a week and then it's another six months or whatever, again, mm. that's, yeah, that's 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 a, a concern. I mean, once, once you're also maybe into a sort of two-year figure of barely playing then either not playing at all or barely playing well yeah. yeah i mean i'm a big football fan i remember owen hargreaves basically barely playing for th three years and then trying to begin a comeback and playing four minutes before he broke down um mm. you know and, and these these scenes it's obviously football is a contact sport so you tend to get a lot more um bigger injuries if you like long-term injuries even at a young age you know knee ligaments for example ankle ligaments you know broken broken bones is mm. more common than you get in tennis 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 seems to be you know uh, muscular and 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 hip and back issues for example and wrist of mm. course um and these tend to be niggly for weeks or months if you like we we occasionally very occasionally get a you know, a, a moment like we had with Zverev in Paris, but they are few and far between. But of course, as players get older, um, and we're seeing obviously with Rafa, and Rafa's having issues, of course, with the primary thing is the hip, but we are seeing other things like in Indian Wells, I believe it was the back. Um, but of course, they are very much related. And he's what was day job, Betty, by the way? My day job? Uh, <laughs> I, I work in a uh basically as an editor but uh, oh, okay. i wasn't sure if you're going to say physician and then you were going to pick, pull me up on something <laughs> yeah 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 we have just uh, quickly sorry to interrupt we've got some news though in the nagal wong match right yeah yeah so 
Nagal is up a break and consolidated it. Um, so it's uh, five two. Wong serving now. Uh, so Nagal's leading five two. Um, yeah. I, let's see what's happening here. Nick, yeah, Wong serving. He's up fifteen love. And that was a very big second serve, and it, I bet he's hit it long. So it's fifteen all. So yeah, I mean, it looks like Nagal's going to take this first set, which is not overly it's going surprising. With, yeah, it's going with our hunch, if you like, more than anything else. I mean, it's not to say that it, it won't have big changes yet, and if Coleman can produce the the goods that we know he's capable of, then then things can always quickly change. But uh, with that break, it is sort of going with our our hunch before the match got underway. Uh, JJ Wolf remains a breakdown. He could do with some wins as well, just coming back on the tour as well. Um, he's had some spells out, um, injured, I know, as JJ, but he's also been back. Uh, and not I haven't winning. actually seen him much for a while. No, exactly. I'm going to check out what he's been up to. Um, okay, I mean, he, yeah, he he hasn't won a match this year, has he? So, or, or other, other than other than uh, this, the qualifier, yeah, 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 so Speed City. So, and now he's down though to Copriva. Yeah, and his ranking must be, I guess, outside the top one hundred right now. I'm just gonna have a quick look. Uh, oh, he's ranked. It looks like he's ninety-four, maybe. His ranking certainly slipped, anyway. But I think, as I say, he's, he was absent from the tour for a little while. I think um, maybe he's zero and four for the year so far. Now, was he injured, or has he just gone through it? Uh, I thought he'd been out injured. I'm just having a quick look. He played Hallis uh in phoenix challenger and he lost in the first round there uh albeit seven six in the in the deciding set and palace is a is a hell of a player to play that early on uh in a challenger so uh, no shame in that result there and i'm seeing zero and four for the year but uh, um that might yeah, be wrong. i'm not sure he's actually been injured i think he's just gonna just play. not playing well okay i thought he'd been out injured but i think he's just well Yes. Yes, we lost in Indian Wells to say what Vilt in the first round uh, in straight sets. Uh, he did retire against Sebastian. I think he was injured between Australia and Indian Wells. He didn't play between the two tournaments. Um, and he did retire injured against Sebastian Byers. I see, I see. I see, yeah. Yeah, he must and have. He, he must have had some yeah. points to defend that he's lost because he's he's dropped down a bit. Yeah, so, he he lost in the first round in Brisbane. He lost in the first round in New Zealand in Auckland, and then he also lost in the first round in Australia. And I think he did might have done okay in Australia the year before, maybe second or third round. I'm going to have a quick look now. Um, so there'll have been some points dropping off there if that's the case. The Gallup thirty love five three. Closing in on the first set. Yeah. How accessible is tennis in in Seoul in terms of TV, etc.? Um. Well. The. <laughs> I mean, for when it comes to like the main ATP tour and uh, WTA, I, I will just rely on uh, tennis TV and th and uh, yeah. these things because. They do show these events, but often they'll just show like on the TV, like maybe like the quarters onwards or something like that. So they won't they won't show all the matches, and then um, that's if they show the tournaments at all. And then like it has got better though because they they do show like um, all the slams, and now it's possible, yeah, because they it never used to be possible. I don't think to watch all the courts say it like a US Open, but now, yeah, they do streaming that allows you to do that. So that's good. And it was nice to have that. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's in Korea. Yeah, last five years or so, um, I, tennis has become much popular. I, I think yeah, and people are watching it more, but also because people are playing it more, um, it's it's become very popular. So like in Seoul. It's a busy city, big population, so the courts are always busy. It's hard actually to book a court. So, uh, yeah, a few years ago, it was easier to just book a court. You didn't really have to worry about it, but now it's like, okay, we have to, you know, if, if it's peak time, you're you're going to be struggling. So, yeah, sometimes I have to go to like the edge of so or something just to get get a game at the time I want to get it, you know? Got it. But, I'm yeah. playing at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, it was the only uh, availability uh, I had. And in Germany, uh, carpet is a very common surface for indoors. I see we've got a set point for Nagal. Yeah, this is at 40, 30 and yeah. let's see how this goes. Okay, and he served it. Wong hits the return into the net. So, five, sorry, 6 3 to Nagal. One set away from. A place in the first round. Yeah, and his first, it would be his first um, Masters that he's actually qualified directly because last time was a, you know, yes. lucky loser. Lucky loser, yeah. <laughs> Um, just a little bit more on JJ Wolf. Yeah, he made the fourth. I thought I didn't want to go too big on what I my memory, but I did vaguely remember him doing well in Australia, and he got to the fourth round last year uh, before losing to eventual semi finalist um, Ben Shelton. So I, I I do remember him doing pretty well in Australia, and um, mm. maybe he did even better than I than I recall by getting to the fourth round. So those points would have fallen off, obviously, with a first round exit. Throw in three more defeats uh, for the year. Uh, along with an absence from the tour through injury, and, and that explains why he's in qualifying and he's probably just scratching for form right now. Um, and he's certainly scratching for form in this this final qualifying round as he as he's three four down. But um, you know, a couple of wins in Miami, and and he probably won't be needing to qualify for various tournaments on clay, albeit that clay might not be his ideal surface. Uh, I'm wondering mm. which tournaments he's signed up for. Um, uh, I'm actually off to Estoril in about. Uh, Portugal, a couple of weeks, yeah, a couple of weeks. Damien and I are going to be covering that uh, for the channel, so that's exciting. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Um, got a little bit of a double bounce replay on my screen right now. So, we've got uh, I've just seen uh, Stearns is up 5 2 on Wang, and uh, yeah, I've got um, Stearns on my screen right now, and I, yeah, she was just in. I don't think it was a controversy, they were just, just replaying the double bounce um scenario um yeah we're off to estoril so that's fun in fact we've got anastasia as well uh, arriving in miami sometime in the next few hours so uh that'll be fun as well hopefully she'll be bringing us some top stuff from there too and um we'll see about busan eddie i mean as i say communication and tennis is not <laughs> a, a thing that works very well whether it's the top of the chain whether it's slams or whether it's the challenges there the communication is at least a lot to be desired um i will keep pursuing it but i saw you tweeting out um the entry list today um oh as yeah well. yeah interesting entry list for me uh, um but uh i'm yeah and uh it, it would be yeah i saw um what's his name uh, max purcell he's decided okay. to drop back to the well the challenger level because he's he was playing atp tour events since sometime last year and he did well one of them he got i'm going to say he did well in one of the masters last season which sort of helped him forward but i think he's realized that uh it might be better for him to drop to the hardcore challengers because we're in clay season now and clay is definitely not oh okay his sort of uh you know, no, that's not his uh, surface. So, yeah, and there's just uh, he had a good win over Felix. I remember in Canada last year. Right. Yeah, and he, what was it? I, I'm going to say he made like he went far on the Masters, and I can't remember which one it is now. But might be in Canada. Let me see. Uh, 
I mean, I think that I think it was first round against um, against uh, Felix last year. It might have been second. Max Purcell overview. Uh, he's somebody who's sort of borderline uh, top one hundred as well. I think. Yeah, he's kind of showing everybody. Well, he's ranked ranked sixty eight at the moment, but okay. Yeah, so he's yeah he's in. Yeah. A bit more comfortable in the top 100 than I thought. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Four and eight for the year. Yeah. So, yeah, in the Busan list, there's a Lloyd Harris as well, which is he's another one that fell away after he was in the top 50. Lloyd Harris got to the top 50, did he? Yeah. 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 I mean, he, he was, was someone who's really been plagued with injuries, right? Yeah. That's, yeah, it was in injuries. He, he got to the US Open quarter final once and then. <laughs> yeah so what yeah. year was that do you know 20 wait uh 20 20 20 21 or something like that yeah okay um, uh, yeah so and then he's just been he's been in the challengers um but yeah it's, uh, oh, Cincinnati, uh, Max Purcell got to the quarters before just being edged out. That's right, by Alcaraz. And he had a, oh, and he had a good back to back Masters here. This is Purcell I'm talking about. Uh, he had a good back to back mm. Masters scenario, really, with obviously coming through qualifying and then beating Felix without dropping a set before a very narrow defeat to Andy Murray. Mm. Uh, looks like Max we've lost John. Yeah, so well, Stearns has taken the first set 6 2 against Wang Yafan. So Stearns keeping up the momentum from Indian Wells. Uh, uh, excellent performance against Sabalenka. It went to, she had match points, but uh, yeah, so she's continuing. In Miami, amazing, yeah. Zhang Shui has actually come back from four love down to four three. Daria Savile still up a up a break, but uh, Wang Zhenyu and Haley Baptiste still on serve. Wang serving. At five six. But uh, I was talking about Lloyd Harris there. He's languishing. He's doing okay in the challengers at the moment, but he did actually make a US Open quarter final when he defeated Kashanov, Escobedo, Shapovalov, and Opelka. And then lost to Alexander Zverev in the quarterfinals. So that was actually a very good run. And then injuries meant they had to start with the protected ranking back in Challenger. So yeah, he's going to be playing in Busan, where at the moment it looks like he'll be the seventh seed, but we'll see. Yeah, so that's a tournament that I might be attending next month so in a few weeks but we'll see what happens so wong yeah, wong. I, sorry, I don't know what's gone on with my um okay i'm back just a second are you on the streets One or two technical issues on my end. Apologies for that, Eddie. Uh, leaving you there alone. Hopefully, you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. No problem. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just explaining there about. Uh, second, I will leave the studio and come back. Okay.
So I'm just watching Sumit Nagal against Coleman Wong. Nagal up 6 3. And. Yeah, so. Nagal looking to actually qualify for his first master event. He'd uh, played Indian Wells as a lucky loser, so he didn't actually qualify uh, directly, but he got in at the lucky loser spot after Nadal withdrew. But he's one set away here against Coleman Wong, 6-3. And in the second set, Wong took the first game. Nagal's now serving. And we've got Nagal serves into the net. Second serve. Good turn backhand from Wong. Nagal. Oh. Forehand. Oh, drags it wide. I'm just watching Nagal against uh, Wong here. So, okay, yeah. Um, I see uh, that Wong won his first service game, and it's um, now Nagal mm -hmm. service. Yeah. Say what Vilt did, did indeed take that first set. Um, uh, oh, yeah. six, he sort of snatched the, the break at 4 3 and then served it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see a set point for Copriva against Wolf on Wolf's serve. Wow. Uh, very much the topic of our conversation just a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, both Wolf and, and Purcell actually are kind of, yeah, they're there, they're dangerous, they can get some good wins. Um, whether they'll whether they'll sort of, oh, and I see Copriva has indeed won that first set and will serve first in the second. Whether we'll see JJ Wolf and Purcell sort of you know, top 32, top 40, as in potentially seeded at slams or not, I'm not so sure. But, you know, they're knocking on the door. I think some people maybe believe in Purcell a little bit more. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I was just explaining earlier about uh, Lloyd Harris's oh, yeah. uh, run to the quarterfinals of the US Open was 2021. Mm -hmm. And he beat... Kashanov, mm. Escobedo, Shapovalov, okay. and Opelka. So he beat three seeds. Nine. Uh, and then lost to Zverev in the quarterfinals. But uh, obviously... So that was 21. Yeah, that was the non... There was no fans there that year, right? 2021? 20, I think there were fans, right? 2020, 2020 sorry. What, what year was it that he did this one? Yeah, 2021. Oh, okay, so, yes, they were. Yeah, yeah. And, and Zverev lost to Novak, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, there was a in the semi finals, he lost it then. That was the year in Medvedev won, Daniel yeah. won, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, so there you go. He's sixth quarter final, made it, and then he was up fairly high in the rankings. And then now, uh, you know, he's down in challenger, so it's uh, it's hard to stay up there, you know, to stay consistently up there, especially if you get injuries. I mean, for him, yeah, it's, I think, really, it's a lot more about, you know, it's all about the injuries, really, you know, compared to someone like Diego, who just, just can't seem to find the level that he had a few years ago. Um, mm -hmm. For him, I mean, I remember him beating Rafa in Washington in 2021 as well, 2021. It might have been just on the, on the, when he got, just before he got that really good run you mentioned in New York. Um, and and it was like ah yes that's right he's a he's actually a top 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 player I mean I know Rafa was having a few issues with his foot that day but but still the level that he was capable of producing even when Rafa was kind of moving well in that match it was like ah yeah I forgot how good a player he can be. Schwarzman. No. Um, uh, or, um, Harris. Yeah, Lloyd Harris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 By the way, we've just got a development in the Wong match. He's up a break. Two oh, okay. Uh, yeah, two love in the second set. So. There so we go. 
Oh, right. Did you see also Zhang, Zhang, uh, Zhang Shui? There's only one break because it's down four up and then it's five four now. Oh, okay. Look at that. Yeah, so, look at that. I, mean, I don't know if she's, yeah, Savile's going to serve it. If she's got the, she can serve it out, but let's see what happens. I've got um, also on my TV right now Wang against Baptiste because they are into a uh, first set tie break, uh, albeit that Wang is up 6 1 in the tie break. So it's looking obviously very good for her. Um, hmm. Just moving around the courts, depending on where the drama is. Baptiste looking very frustrated at the fact she couldn't get her first serve in. I think she's obviously a lot more frustrated over the fact that she's 6 1 down. And facing five set points uh and it's just too easy for Wang on the return and she takes the first set seven six yeah good old shang making a big fight back there getting one of the two breaks back after four yeah. love as you said no, she's uh, still playing. yeah got a break point here as well for yuan i don't think she's had a break of serve yet but she's had I don't know, but she'll be pushing double figures for the number of break point opportunities she's had on the blink of a serve. And she takes it this time. And Breaks it's four back. all. Yeah, four all. She was knock she's been knocking at the door on just about every single blink of a service game. And now she has got the break back. Four all. Well, she's someone that's had a, a very good year so far. Uh so It'll be interesting to see if she can pull that out. Yeah. So, yeah, she's had a. Where we are there. Yeah, she's been in semi, Hobart, and okay. then it just in in Austin there she won the title. So just recently, or just before uh -huh. Indian Wells, and then obviously yeah. she's, she's made the quarterfinals in Indian Wells. So now. Yeah, she go in, into this, I guess. Back to back really winners. Good. Back to back winners from her as well. I think both. No, well, this one on the backhand side. Yeah. Um, no, on the forehand side. Back to back winners from her has put up fifteen. Love. Uh, I say back to back because it was a, to break the serve was, on, was a nice winner. Taking the ball pretty early and blink of a can't do much about it. So the a little pendulum swing here at the moment. We'll see how long that swing lasts. Uh, blink of a looking pretty grumpy as you can probably imagine she puts a forehand into the net as well hi jake hi isaac and uh, hi to anyone else tuning in make sure you do hit the like button uh also give us a follow on um on social media at talking tennis td t, t, t i should say at talking tennis td your ten your um twitter handle is tennis asia am i right yeah there you go at tennis asia and oh zhang pulls that backhand wide but it's 30 15 to savile she's two points away from the first set then so i'm just gonna watch this one and see if she closes it out sure Yep, and Coleman Wong's up three love in the second set. Nice, yeah. Ah, JJ Wolf has got an early break to lead one love against Copriva, so some of the fight backs are on. Oh, oh. oh that was a good point there, but Savile comes out on top. Zhang was... Shang was looking to make the move. She came forward. Savile didn't quite pass her. Shang made the, the short volley, but Savile was there to finish it off. She's got two set points, right? Yep. Oh, and it's finished off in style. The forehand cross court Savile with a winner, which is six four to her. Okay, so the fight back from two breaks down didn't quite come to completion, no. if you like. 
Uh, the comeback from Yuan, though, is working out pretty well because she's now up a break. Sorry, she's up 5 4. Um, mm. It will on serve with blink of a serving to stay in it. But uh, Peyton Stearns is consolidating her position, though, against Wang. She's up a set and a break. But there are fight backs elsewhere, obviously, with Coleman Wong on the men's side and JJ Wolf up breaks in the second set, having lost the first. Yeah, and I was going to say, well, it looks like down 6 2 2 love. It's not looking good for Wang, but in the Australian Open, the first round uh, was against Kirstea. She was down six love, three love, and came back and won that match. So, you know, that's with tennis, we never know what's going to happen. But, like, Indeed. at the moment, Stern's in control. Okay, so amazingly, Wong has a double break point to go. Yeah, two break points to go, uh, a double break up. So Nagal at 1540. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, Wong, he's, he loves to smash a, a second serve, you know, go for the winner. And mm -hmm. when he's in the zone, he'll. <laughs> You know, be creating break points all over the place, but and he's definitely like a. I've I've followed a lot of his matches, and he's played a lot of three setters and 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 in the challenger levels that come back from a set down or. Okay. You know, so he's definitely someone that's. He's very competitive. Oh, okay, but Miguel holds on. It's fourth. It's uh, juice. Oh wow, I often wonder what it would be like if a, a player just decided, and I think it depends on on your makeup and, and where you're at and, 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 and all sorts of things going on, you know, differential between first and second serves, especially. But uh, I'm thinking of somebody, probably Sasha Zverev is the first player that springs to mind. What it would be like is if you just did three months of the tour and you said, right, I'm just going to serve first serves and see how it works out. Um, right. Just to see, you know, what, what would go on. I mean, the, uh, the reason Sasha Svedev springs to mind is because of the number of double faults that he may be prone to when under pressure anyway. So if you're going to throw in a double fault, you might as well you might as well just be going bigger on that second serve. Uh, the other thing as well with Sasha is that he's actually got a pretty, in fact, not pretty, he's got an incredible uh, percentage on his first serve. So he's getting a lot of first serves in. So he's not having to rely on that second serve so often. And if if you're getting, let's say, 80% of your first serves in and you've got mm. an 8 out of 10 chance of therefore getting your second serve in as well, then, um, you know, and, and you're, you're also getting such good results off your so-called first serve. Um, yeah, I just wonder what it would be like just to, you know, you could probably even try it out in practice. I mean, you could. You could just do even just break it down to a, to a point scenario. We'll do two hundred points first serves only. We'll do two hundred points first and second serve, and we'll see see how that works out. Now, of course, there's a lot of variables. I mean, not even just the opponent you're you're, you're firing those points at, but also um, you know how well your opponent responds and how. But but still, I just think it'll be when if you've got such a differential between your first and second serves. Uh, it might be an option. Hmm. I mean, but you know, the thing is, so if if you're if you're well, I suppose if you're doing all the time, it changes everything in terms of like consistency. Yeah, it might change a bit, but still, you're going to have spells where, I mean, in a first serve, are you like how how much are you going to actually be going for? Is it is it going to be like a first serve all the time? But I don't know if it's it's, it's easier Men to it, it's meant it's a mental challenge. Yes, I yeah. agree. But oh, another break point for Wong. Let's see what happens here. Oh, what a backhand cross court. Oh, but he Yeah, that's out. So he hits the forehand long. So we're still on juice between Wong and Nagal. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also some people have talked about whether it'd be good uh, to actually not have a second serve 
<laughs> oh, yeah, that's the rule change. Yeah. Um, I, I, are we in a position where we need to do that? I mean, it, it could be interesting. Um, how we could trial it, but uh, uh, is is tennis that broken necessarily? Well, I think like it would obviously it would create it would definitely make m more rallies happening on the men's side because obviously it would take a bit of the edge of the well. I think it would. It would mean a lot of people would be taking yeah. a bit off their serves, right? So, yeah. But by the way, just a bit of breaking news: Yuan has won the first set, coming back from a breakdown. As I said, every blink of a serve, she was there or thereabouts. As I say, pushing. Uh, I would imagine by the end of that first set, I'm sure she had more than ten breakpoint opportunities, um, taking two of them in the end, um, and that was all it needed. And she had, by the way, three set points before finally stealing the deal as well so that is a a, a real reversal of fortune for her go on Ooh. again wong just struggling to take any break points here it, it hits the forehand long again back to juice so this could be a key game because you feel like you know a double break up wong would probably take this set but if, if the gal could hold on maybe you can Get back yeah. here. It could be one of those where it sort of swings the momentum back towards Nagal, yeah. JJ Wolf has been in a bit of a dog fight for this second game as well. I mean, yeah, just JJ Wolf. I mean, I would, in the past, I would be expecting him to win a kind of match like this, but let's see. Okay, so he's he's up to to love. Still, Wong holds on. Back to juice. Yeah, so I almost feel like Wong. Sometimes he, you know, like he relishes like going down a set <laughs> you know what i mean like he loves right. to get in these battles and like i always feel like sometimes players are like that when they when they go behind or you know when you see it sort of it, it ignites something in them oh good sir from Nagal though he sets up another game point Maybe it also is a case of him finding his feet, particularly on his serve. Maybe it need, he needs a few games to warm up. Hmm. Yeah, so still going. Another juice. I do wonder how long that's been going on now. We've got the live. Oh. It's getting impatient, I think. Where do you get the, what's a good place to get, uh, oh, what do you call it, like, stats for like match length, okay, wait, hang on. Maybe Tennis Insights, uh, maybe um, uh, Tennis Abstract, mm -hmm. looking at, looking for sort of generally how they get on with, like, oh no, so, okay, actually I've got on here a, uh, Okay, so flash go yet? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so they actually, the Gao eventually held. Mm. It's 3 1. So it's 3 1 to Wong. Uh, yeah. So that was <laughs> how many? Yeah, so Wong had four break points that he didn't, sorry, five break points in that game that he didn't take. So 
will he come to regret that? I mean, let's see. Yes, right. It could be one of those games. It's like um, there was one. Oh, there was more than one, but there was one or two in in Medvedev's run to the final. I remember thinking, ah, that was a big, a big hold. I think it was against um, against um, Holger Rune. There was a particular game there that was just nip and tuck, and then Medvedev gets a break in the next game. Uh, in the end, Rune break, breaks back, but then Medvedev gets another break. But it's often the case, isn't it, when I remember thinking about the Wimbledon final in that 25-minute game between uh, Djokovic and Alcaraz. And Alcaraz was up a break, but it, it, mm. and it was, uh, so Alcaraz was, was threatening to go up a double break. Um, but it was like, you know what, if he doesn't get the double break, you'd fear for him for the set. But he did mm. get it, so he, and he ended up seeing out that set. So do you do you have any uh, picks for the tournament this time on the men's and women's? Um, I actually didn't. I've just realised. Oh no, I did complete my women's bracket. I'm just just going to have a quick look. Okay. Um, you've done the bracket. Yeah, I've done the bracket, and I I, I couldn't remember if I'd. Um, I've had two trips to the dentist today, and I've I've had oh, really? one and a half naps. Now, you might say to me, how can you have one and a half naps? Well, I'm not sure if the first one qualifies as a nap because I was drifting um, and before I had to go back to the dentist again. Yeah, I had to go back to the dentist because they couldn't do what they wanted the first time because they wanted to take some pictures and their picture person wasn't there. Um, so I went back um, for the pictures a, a second time. The second one was a more, yes, that was definitely a nap. Um, and it's uh, I, I was drifting after lunch and before uh, these matches all kicked off. Now, why is that relevant? Oh, because I couldn't remember if I'd done if I'd done my bracket or not for the for the women because I had it in my hand as I was just yeah. about to drift off. But I'm pretty sure I completed my women's bracket, and it was such a weird and tricky bracket to complete. Um, because I don't think on paper this should be uh, an eager Sviantec cakewalk. Uh, I think that tournament anywhere on the planet, probably French Open aside, is kind of Indian Wells, um, especially if she gets a half-decent draw. Well, now she's at a tournament where I don't think that the conditions are quite as well suited. And yeah, of course, she did mm. do the second double in uh, 2022. Um, but she's got quite a nice draw here. And the Rebecca question mark, I have no idea. Um, we're obviously waiting on to see if, if Sabalenka will participate or not. Uh, I've got not too much faith in Coco Goff's form right now. I know she made the semis recently, but she had a few scares en route. Um, Pagula the same. So then what are you left with? Well, I'll tell you what I'm left with. I I'm left with Osaka. In my semi-final, I think. Wow, <laughs> I mean that would be that would be something. Yeah, right. And I've got Azarenka in the final, losing to Iga. Is it Az Azarenka is going to play uh, the winner of this match uh, between? So that would be uh, Stearns, isn't it? Azarenka, if, if Stearns gets through, I think she'll play look. Azarenka. So just having a look. So Azarenka's maybe got like a a good section there. Yeah, although Peyton Stearns, I think given the the form that she showed, mm. also yeah, I've got I've got Peyton Stearns to win this this match, and I've got Azarenka to beat her. But then then the the key match is the winner of Siniakova Zheng. Um, I say Siniakova, I have her beaten Bogdan in the first round. Um, so then I have Zheng beating Zinyakova, and then it's Kinwen Zheng against Victoria Azarenka in the third round. And I've gone for Azarenka. And that's probably the, the match that kind of seals uh, a deep run for her. Um, she'll then play, in my bracket, she'll then play the winner of Katie Bolter, Beatrice Hadamaya. Uh, although Hadamaya, Deanne Parry, there's no guarantees for, for Hadamaya, I think, that, that she'll win that one. Mm. Um, I have DM Parry winning her first match. So yeah, but you can you, you're just listening to some of the names that I'm throwing at you. 
because of that that sort of two to five area of of of, of doubt for obviously very very different reasons for each of those players we're then looking at sort of six seven eight nine ten in the world and I don't they don't they don't fill me with any faith anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong, Pagula six, twelve months ago at the right Grand Slam, i.e. not French Open, and you're going quarterfinal tick, you know? Mm. Coco Goff between August and November last year, you're going, she's a threat, definitely. But probably from November, and I know she got to the semis in Australia, but I think that was uh, largely um draw dependent. Uh, and then there, for me, there was a gap between her and Arena. So then, then you're going to have somebody in the semifinals. <laughs> You've got to have two or three other players that are going to join Eager in the semifinals. And I, I have Ostapenko beating Rebekina, uh in a quarterfinal, I think. So she then plays Azarenka, and they feel like they're playing each other every second week at the moment, and Azarenka's beating her every second week. Um so, yeah, so I have an Azarenka Igor Sviontek final, which if Jake is still listening, I know he'll be pleased with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't actually had the time to look through the draw on either men's or the women's, so. It's so random. It, it's, it's one of those that we could see. If, if Iga had a trickier draw, other than, so I've got her, this is Iga's run, at least according to my bracket. Camilla Georgi, Linda Noskova, Ekaterina Alexandrova, Emma Navarro, Naomi Osaka. That's to get to the final. Okay, now, of course, I, I could have a lot of those wrong and probably will. But you can imagine that the, the players that I'm putting through to meet Iga as well are kind of in 50, 50, 60, 40 battles. Mm -hmm. Um and so, yeah, I've got Coco Goff uh, losing to Marta Kostiuk in the round of 32. Um, I think they had an epic battle in, in Australia, if, I'm, if I remember rightly. Um, and Kostiuk's in pretty good form, obviously, getting to the semis in Indian Wells, the final in San Diego. Um, yeah, I've got Naomi Osaka beating Daniel Collins in the quarterfinal. I've got Daniel Collins beating Ange Jabeur. So um, these names, like Ange Jabeur, world number six right now, I think, um, mm. just really, really struggling. You know, I mean, struggling to even get a win. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does feel like at the moment that, you know. The players in form are sort of 20, 30, 40 in the world. You know, your Marta Kostyuk's, your Jastremskas to some extent. These are the ones that are sort of getting good results right now, as opposed mm. to the sort of six to 20 bracket. Can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's just my, my computer froze up there, but I don't know what it's doing, but it's okay. I think my, my camera is occasionally freezing, but if we can hear each other, that's the the most important thing. I'm not sure if it's my internet or my, my laptop. But yeah, so it's it's a real, real tricky one. So uh, yeah, Coleman Wong's up 5-1 and serving for the second set. So yeah, it looks like it's going to a decider. Yeah, 15 love as well. Oh, JJ Wolf is up a double break now uh, on Copriva, 4-1 serving. Sizu Bergs is in action later as well. I always think he's a fun player to watch. Mm. I watched him in the Davis Cup here in Seoul. Uh, okay. Oh, we seem to have lost Eddie momentarily, but at least you have me. You'll be pleased to know. Um, so Zhang is continuing that fight back against Saville. I say continuing because... Zhang was down for love before getting it back to 5-4, but she wasn't able to complete the comeback uh, against Saville. But now she is a, a break-up in the second set. So I guess if she was four love down, uh, she's lost three games, but she's won seven. So seven of the last 10 games, and she's serving, uh, hoping to make it 4-1, albeit that she's love 15 down. 
Uh, Wang is now up a break on Baptiste, so Baptiste is really staring down the barrel there. Uh, Stearns and Wang are on serve in the second set, so Stearns is uh, a long way from getting the job done there right now. And over on the men's side, of course, the men's are in qualifiers. The women are playing the first round. Keep up at the back. Uh, say what, Vilt and Grenier are on serve three all in the second set, but Grenier playing with fire right now at three all and deuce. Uh, Wong has two, Coleman Wong has two set points to level things up against Sumit Nagal, um, as the, as Wong will be hoping to force that into a decider and very much having the momentum with him. Those of you, by the way, watching on YouTube, please do hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit sub scribe um and jj wolf up a double break on uh Koprivan. i think we've got eddie rejoining us now so common wong has got the job done eddie mm. well yeah it seemed to be that he just hit that zone again where he was making a lot of returns and yeah that's when he when he's like that it's no surprise that he's got those in the breaks there but uh yeah, it's going to be interesting now. We're having a bit of a break, I think, now. I think, oh, yeah. I'm not sure how hot it is in Miami, actually, just now. But Well, I, re I remember saying to you at the beginning of the stream uh, that there's been a few things going on in Miami already. Uh, yeah. And, of course, one of those included the collapse of one player. Well, who was it? Was it Moutet who collapsed? No, that was um, uh, Arthur Cazot, the front. Ah, yeah. uh, yes, Cazot, yeah. Yeah, he just fainted. Like, I mean, it's not something you ever see, really. But like, but uh, yeah, that's. Well, actually, that having said that, I mean, it has happened in Miami. I remember uh, Jack Draper. Oh he's yeah, really struggled. Obviously, he's had his physical issues, but yeah, he was cramping and and yeah, he like he needed. Did he not? He didn't finish the match. Maybe I can't remember. It's a. It's when he was quite young in yeah. Miami. Just reading about Cazo right now. So Arthur Cazo collapses mid-match at Miami Open. Footage posted on social media shows Arthur Cazo falling to the ground as he begins to ready himself uh, for his opponent, uh, Howard Mayo, to serve a 2-1 up in the third. I've actually seen one or two people critical of Mayo's response. Um, I'm not sure if, if he can be criticised for that, to be honest with you. I don't think he would have known exactly. I'm not, I'm not sure he quite realised... I no, think, I don't think he realised, yeah. Yeah, he was looking away, I think, for a moment, and then, yeah. But, yeah, it must have been hot because it, yeah, yesterday, because I don't, I don't think it's quite so hot today. I just looked at the weather. It says about 24 Celsius, so, I mean, I don't People, think. Go on. Yeah, I, yeah, it probably won't have a big impact, but, you know, it's the humidity, I guess. It, it makes people, that's what people struggle with. Um, in um, in breaking uh, my local coffee shop news, uh, I would mm. like to reveal that um, one of the reasons I was a, li a little bit more delayed than normal, Eddie, is because uh, the guy uh, served me a coffee with cream rather than the milk coffee that I had actually ordered. Um, we had a little bit of a debate over how the order took place. And um, ah. <laughs> I said to him, because I, 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 I walked away with the coffee and I saw that it was sort of a black coffee with, with cream, if you like. And uh, I went back to him and I said, I did order a milk coffee. And he sort of, it was one of those things where under his breath, he was like, no, you didn't. And I was like, yeah, I didn't. He was on his phone. You see, that was the main problem. When I walked in, I don't mind. I'm not a, I'm not that strict. You can do whatever you like, in my opinion, as long as you, um, uh, as long as you serve what I ordered. Mm. And I definitely said, I milk cafe bitter. I want one milk coffee, please. And uh, he also said, do you want large or small? He got that bit right, I say. But the problem was, he's like this. He's on his phone, blah, blah, blah. And he's doing the whole coffee thing. Now, I'm not a, a stickler. As long as you get the job done, you can be on your phone all day. You can be doing this. I don't care. You can be playing computer games. Anyway, we had a little bit of a, a, a 60 to 90 second debate um, as to who was in the right. And uh, it, it was one of those where he goes... No, you did. You no, know, it was like that. He didn't want to. He didn't go. He didn't have a full-on disagreement with me. It was one of those sort of ones you do under your breath. Where and I and I decided to say, yeah, I, I did. You know, no, 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 you didn't. You know, it was like, 
So, yeah. Anyway, I'm sure people are very keen to know about that. Um, uh, <laughs> Jensen Booksby, uh, he's still suspended as far as I'm aware. I'm not sure when that when that ban is up. The Halop thing, of course, is very much um, the topic right now. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, I'm going to wait. I guess I should wait to like know all the details and stuff but it seems a bit strange to me that there is a there is a second uh trove is probably too long a word too too big a word in terms of the the, the amount of content but there is a second bulletin i think we're going to get on the reason why uh the second panel if you like came to a different conclusion to the first yeah i mean it just doesn't regardless of you know the actual details of you know was she at fault or was she not at fault like it just seems very bad for tennis that this kind oh. of thing keeps happening because um it, the system is broken it's just yeah. terribly broken how two different um expert panels can come to two very different conclusions mm. yeah i mean i also just find some of the, the reasoning quite strange like how you know it was given as a reasoning uh, a reason that you know she she probably wasn't taking anything deliberately because she didn't have any tournaments coming up, but I find that reasoning quite no, it just makes strange. Sense. Yeah, <laughs> because I mean, like it's, it's yeah, it's not like you you know a lot of time you know with if it's like blood doping they're gonna be like you're not just gonna do it pop it just before the tournament starts like you just it's to be an ongoing thing. But you know I don't know the the, the I'm not really I'm, being relevant. I don't see why why that's relevant to be honest with you. Whether I have a dozen tournaments on the horizon or otherwise, whether I decided to to unintentionally dope because i know i've not got many tournaments on the horizon well that's a contradiction right if i'm if i'm tactically doing something i don't know but then i'm unintentionally doing it and it doesn't really matter because i'm not playing any tennis and i think listen I, I and perhaps i'm focusing on other sports but as far as i'm aware they should be fairly unified on this i think we are about 25 years past the intentional debate we when we start you know doing a lot of these things and probably the most high profile big first case and possibly still is the most high profile case in sports history occurred in seoul in 1988 with ben johnson um there was very little doubt i think in the conclusion as to whether it was intentional or not but in the years that followed because you know for it pre-1970s the, uh, the notion of drugs and sport just wasn't uh, wasn't a topic for debate. But then once we start having a few cases and suspicions as well and blah, 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 um, uh, and state uh, doping as well, um, certainly accusations of that um, look into it in terms of the 1970s, I think, in particular. Um, and then we get to a position in the 90s and the 2000s now where this is a, something we're taking very seriously. You know, we're getting samples, we're getting second samples, although actually the two samples are, I believe, just the same sample that's divided into two. Um, and the the reason for intent kind of eventually is dismissed around about the, the, the 2000s because it's like, you know, you have every sympathy for somebody who unintentionally does something. But by the 2000s, it's kind of like the message is put across to every top athlete on the planet. You don't have any excuse anymore because you have team doctors, you have everybody giving you, you know, I, I don't consume this much argued coffee without it having checked uh, first uh, as to A, whether it's the milk coffee, which I originally ordered, uh, but also B, uh, the contents of it and whether I'm allowed to take the substances within that. And of course, every particularly every single medicine that we're taking, we are not taking any risk with that. It, you know, you're a top 50 tennis player and, and you are getting all the best advice you could possibly get um, as to what's legal and what's otherwise. Uh, and perhaps you would also perhaps cite though that individual if you did end up getting caught short. But, you know, missing tests and... and um, uh, that was uh, messing with um, Jensen Brunsby. Oh, Jensen Booksby as well. Yeah, I mean, actually, I had Rio Ferdinand in mind there. And, uh, he actually got a, a harder and stricter punishment than um, 
than um, ba, 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 than people who actually had failed drugs tests. He got nine months, whereas there were some Dutch players, I think, around that time uh, that got three to six months. But but the the intention argument is just just not an argument. It's a non-argument that you did this by mistake. And the reason it was a non-argument is because you have all of these people to check. And secondly, unintentionally gaining a, a, an advantage illegitimately is still gaining advantage. So, yeah, that was that was what I understood. And, and this is the first time I've seen this kind of point of intent really used in, in a defense. So I was just smiling there because Coleman Wong absolutely smacked a forehand cross court, a winner, but uh, <laughs> but he's uh, got he's on advantage here, trying to hold. And uh, a miss hit winner was that? No, no, no. He he no he. It wasn't a miss hit winner. He absolutely leathered the ball <laughs> cross court. Yeah, the it was great. Um, but he holds on there with an ace as well. So looks like this might be a tight final set between Wong and Nagal. Yep. Uh, some comments here. That's why everyone goes to Cass. Uh, why is Cass always more favorable to teams and athletes? Uh, Matthew, I, I, honestly, I don't want to be out too far. I mean, I'm already at the limit of my uh, awareness, if you like. Um, yeah, I know the tennis podcast went into a bit of a deep dive on the uh, initial report uh, when she got the the, the four year ban, and, and they were like, "Yeah, this is fairly damning." And I know that her defense then was based on a character reference from Tim from um, from Cahill, her former coach, and that's why it was dismissed because. You know, a, a character reference is not really a lot in, in, in this particular, you know, scientific case, if you like. Uh, the wind is picking up, by the way, and, and having an effect on some of the points between Blinkerville and Yuan. Um, of course, that can vary from court to court, depending on the amount of protection. So I was extremely surprised. Um, yeah, I was extremely surprised. But as then, to be honest with you now, of course, having look, looked back, and this is what Matthew is highlighting there, that that Cass often, you know, have a more favourable uh, outlook on on the on the athletes. Mm. And and to be honest with you, I don't know. I, you know, I, I'm not. It, it might sound like I was trying to build a case there to suggest that Halep was was guilty, but no. The truth is, I don't know. But what I do know is that there is something severely broken if if one panel is coming to one conclusion, another one is coming to another on a such regular basis. I think like the the substance which that was found like she tested positive for was isn't it it's like a drug that's was at the time like it's not available or was like in research was it like a, yeah that's what okay. i read so i'm not I'm yeah so this is but it just made me think more generally about how like you know not not everything can actually be caught because uh it you know like there's only so much that can be done as well in the first place so you know it's a difficult in terms of like obviously the i think i agree like doping uh anti-doping should be there but um you know if you if you really want to do it i do wonder like whether is is the system adequate or in, in order to you know catch uh i mean i, I honestly i'm <laughs> i'm just rambling now but yeah there's you know i do wonder like are some of the people that do get caught are they just sloppy <laughs> or is it just you know um or is it you know i don't know but uh it's just very strange yeah, how it just seems to be very inconsistent um i mean it there was also uh what's his name the polish player i mean i don't know the details of his. Uh, yes i know who you mean yeah yeah he's he's also banned right my my check well he was banned but then he appealed i think and it was he's he's already back now so he won the, the challengers in in uh in uh where is it Kenya was it? I can't remember. It was in uh -huh. yes. So yeah, he just come back. So 
Um, yeah, so I mean, I don't know the details of his, but again, that I think he did a, a appeal and he's managed to. Did he get that? Yeah, I need to find it. I think he did. I, I think he falls into this this category where everyone's getting their. their so initially, uh, he received a thirteen month ban, or did he did he get it reduced? I I thought why did I? Or did it get reduced to thirteen months? No, no, no. I think. It... Hmm. This is what Damien will know because he's. <laughs> oh, Damien's all over this stuff, yeah. But you know, he's Polish as well, so he, he would know. Really as well, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was suspended by the International Tennis Integrity Agency for thirteen months. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know, this like the details of that. So, but. Um, he said it wasn't intentional or right? not knowingly. Um, uh, he used that ex defense as well, did he? Oh, no, it was actually. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> reading what's popping up here. I don't want to say something that's. Uh, no, that was the agency said. They acknowledged that he'd not knowingly or intentionally committed the defence, but they had suspended him for 13 months. Okay. Yeah, that was, I remember that was a bit shocked by that one because I watched him in Seoul uh, and uh, Busan, I think, at the Challengers. And then it was just not, yeah. And it was actually in during that Asian stint that he, he got positive for the banned substances. So, yeah, but uh, I, I just, yeah, it's it is a bit weird and it just seems quite random. It's just, I mean, Halep, you know, I'm sure she had like people to argue her case for and everything. Um, some other people might not have the same resources or you know like the ah well that too yes so that's yeah regardless of whether she's right or wrong but like you know there's yeah so but um it's, yeah and uh yeah i think with um jensen brooksby he, he appealed right but uh his his was a case of yeah he claimed that he missed like one or two tests was it yeah that um because they do random testing right that out, outside of uh not at the tournaments right or i can't remember exactly but he uh missed one of them and uh it, i mean when he explained it it did sound like it was just an accident or so you know his um mistake but uh yeah. I mean, I, I remember, um, uh, you know, Shane Warne, for example, getting a ban because, you know, he was taking a diuretic, in other words, something to keep him thin, if you like, because he was concerned about his weight and it was not performance enhancing, if you like, or, or but it was like, a, that, sorry, mate, that's just doesn't, it's not a defense. And I remember mm. as well, um, a similar thing with Colo Torre as well. Um, and again, that's just it's just a, that's just a it's not a not a it's not a defense it's not a you, you've got something by the way say what Vilta's won I've got somebody in the live chat asking about Nagal's chances um having not seen a single point from the match I am <laughs> wrong because of the momentum change and also some of the comments we made at the beginning but it's it's 50 50 at least in terms of the scoreboard and I think that's kind of the synopsis that they were looking for so yeah but say what Vilt has indeed booked his place um into the first round proper uh say what is somebody who's kind of knocking on the door of of getting a uh, a qualification automatically for these first rounds but he is also somebody who i think probably doesn't quite have that movement advantage on a hard court that he has on clay and therefore is often going out early but, you know he might prove me wrong oh yeah so i totally missed it jj wolf has taken yeah he's, set um, six one he's so Making a big come. Uh, LeBron uh, is the goat. Uh, is suggesting a one comeback. Well, it certainly um, 
winning uh, six of seven games, of course, in the second set, although now it's really tip and t nip, nip and tuck in the, in the third. Um, it seems like it'd be close to me, but as I say, like Wong, <laughs> he, he's had a few three setters and, and comebacks from a set down, uh, I would say more than average uh, for players out there. So we'll see. Oh, did you, you, got, you, got, you got a stat on that, did you? Pardon? Did you get a stat on Wong's comebacks in second in second? Order? No, I didn't. But it's just from my own uh, observations. I mean, it's certainly last year. I remember like a lot of um, on the in the challengers, he came back from a set down quite a few times. Got or, it. Yuan, yes. by the way, is uh, and this one has slipped me by. Uh, she's up five two in the second set, so she's a game away from knocking out Blinkova. And Baptista yeah. is out. She loses six three in the in the second set. And Zhang's got a set point here uh, against Savo five two show. Yeah, so there's another fight back on there. Uh, for those of you in the live chat, one and where you can see the match it depends on which country you're in. Um, in Germany, I am watching via Sky Sports. I think it's the same in the UK. But uh, depending on what other country you're in, you might have a different uh, opportunity to watch it. Uh, the tennis TV or tennis channel. Uh, I think are two options, although don't count me on the... Oh, I think so I, I just realised the Miami Open channel is actually streaming qualifying on court two oh, okay. right now on the YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's so the Miami... Watch, YouTube there you go. You can, watch, you can watch uh, on YouTube Young Gadgets or Young Gadgets. You can watch on YouTube some of the men's qualifying at the very least. Mm -hmm. The Tennis TV actually did it last night i was not able to watch that but it doesn't seem like they're broadcasting that now but the actual my miami open youtube channel if you go there mm -hmm. they're oh they're streaming court five and court two so there's oh, wolf wow. wolf coprivas on court five right now so you can watch that live and Capri coprivas got a break point i've got blink of a serving to stay in the match and I think I had her to win in my bracket. She's love 15 down already. <laughs> the bracket's already... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I found this bracket uh, really difficult. I mean, I didn't do great in, in Indian Wells, but um, eager winning the title, I, I, I felt that was a, a, a likely result. I've said it a few times on streams that with with ego and tournaments it, it's kind of like conviction or doubt and when you have conviction she wins the tournament and when you have doubt she doesn't and there's about 40 percent of the tour where you have doubt for whatever reason it's normally about surface mm -hmm. occasionally form but it's generally it's generally surface and conditions dependent and mm -hmm. if you go into a tournament where you're thinking i'm just not sure she doesn't quite do it one way or another and when you go into a tournament going this is just you know great for her and indian wells i think up there with the french open is as good as it gets that's when when she gets the job done and and some and often put pretty comfortably she did um last week uh blink of her is love 30 down no sorry 15 30 now on her serve well yeah it's uh you want wolf is, wolf is down a break on capriva in the in the decider mm -hmm. And Zhang took the second set 6 2 against Savile. Nice. So there's still hope for her. That to she might out. actually get yeah. a victory. I think I chose her in my bracket. I mean, this is all off the top of my head, but I did do it, you know, just a couple of hours ago. I've not done the men's bracket yet. I'll wait until the qualifiers are done. Mm. Yeah. How do you do it usually? Do you have a app or something? Yeah, TNNS. I'll send you because we've got a um, we've got a, a a league thing. In fact, I did put it in the WhatsApp group yesterday. But um, uh, both us and Popcorn, who are sort of like um, cousins of ours, if you like, um, uh, in that loads of people that are on Talking Tennis also contribute to the website Popcorn. Oh yeah. Um, and i'm um, just having a quick look at oh, okay uh, there's a media day going on in 
in uh, in Miami today. That's obviously for the people that are already directly into uh, either the main draw or even into the second round for the big, big cheeses of tennis, uh, speaking to the media today. Um, what was I in the middle of saying? Something probably not that significant. Oh, um, oh, this, yeah, that's right. I'll t I'll send you a direct message on on either on WhatsApp or on Twitter to invite mm. you to this tennis league. But yes, via the the TNNS app. In fact, this is for everyone, even those tuning in. Come join our fantasy league. Use the league code Evert E V E R T dash Let dash five eight nine one, and you can join the Talking Tennis League. I will actually post that in the live chat in a few seconds. And yeah, and you just join it and then you compete with other people and you get points, of course, when you get results right. And if you predict eager to win the tournament, beating Azarenka in the final, and that ends up happening, and you get lots and lots of points and you sort of all compete against each other. I've just said, that's me sending you a WhatsApp. Oh, yeah. I heard the vibration. It's, <laughs> like it's but millimeters or centimeters away in terms of my laptop, but thousands of kilometers in terms of reality. Oh, Technology, hey? Feels it's thirty thirty Wong Nagao. Feels mm. very tight this match at the moment. Yeah. Hmm. Nagao now has a break point. Ooh. And yep, thirty forty long serving is the first serve. Oh. Oh, I can't actually tell if it's gone in or not. <laughs> the stream's not very good, you know. Oh, and yeah. that was just wide from Nagao. He almost hit a lovely passing shot that I thought I might have caught the line, but no, it was a bit wide. And so we're back to Juice. Wong holding on. And by the way, Yuan has beaten... Um... Link of a six four six two, and really, go on. I'm just going to say she's keeping up that amazing run of form that she's in at the moment. Indeed, so. and 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 really, um, um, it, it although Blink of her was up on the scoreboard quite early on with a break to love, she was hanging on. You know, even though she got to I think four two, um, mm. you know, every service game just about it was like break point here break point there and it was just she was just struggling through so yeah there you go and in the end i would say a, a much much better player on the day um so blinker was out and yeah and i see zhang has won the second set against saddle for that into a third uh wang as i mentioned before beat baptiste and stearns is through as well in straight sets so her little mini good run of form continues um and what are we looking at with Wong and Nadal? He just saved a break point there. Yeah, the juice. Yeah, that was backhand cross court and then down the line, came in and then finished off with a volley at the net. He's quite good at the net. He's yeah. played, played a lot of doubles, Wong. Okay. We'll stay live until the end of the wong Nagal match. Okay. And... Yeah, Wong actually won a slam in juniors in doubles, didn't he? I think he did. <laughs> Yuan, doubles. Will Yuan will play Sakari in the next round. Uh, I think Sakari's vulnerable. Yeah. I know she got to the final in New Wales, but it's just somebody that, you know, she's a Sakari, Paolini, you know, a bit of good form and a nice draw, and they can be in the final of a, of a 1,000. But they can equally lose in the first round the following week, you know, or the first match, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, different conditions as well. I mean, 
Wendy and Wells is very slow, I think. I, I don't know, actually, this year. So Miami last year was quicker than it usually was. Um, which I think was a deliberate thing that is it the, the tournament director? Is it James Blake or is it? Uh... Yeah, James Blake. Yeah. 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 I think he talked about it, but I'm, I'm guessing this year it's going to be the same more or less, but it's definitely quicker than uh, Indian Wells, which is very slow again, <laughs> but So that's why I wonder whether, yeah, if uh, Alcaraz can get it done against this time, it's different different conditions. That might be more beneficial for uh, Sinner this time. Yeah, definitely. That's the that's the the theory, and I, and I would agree with that. Um, I'll have to have a look at my men's bracket later and, and see how that pans out. But uh, yeah. The, the consensus is that, that that Carlos might have an edge in in Indian Wells, which which actually that was pretty much how the result panned out. Mm. Um, but uh, Sinner would have the edge in Miami, and of course, Sinner beat him in a, in a tight three setter last year in Miami. Wong serves an ace, holds on, three all. Big set. hold that. Big hold that feels like. Mm. I think Nagao is looking a bit frustrated. Whereas Wong sort of, he looks up for it. Yeah, still could go either way, I think, though. Yeah, I, 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 I wasn't too surprised when Alcaraz beat Sinner in that match, to be honest, but I, I was only just surprised that it came after that first set when Sinner was... <laughs> It was ridiculous in that first set, 6-1. It was just... But, uh, yeah. And into the second set, it was quite a good uh, close match, but uh, he just fell away, especially in that third set. Yeah, error strewn. And, and I know, of course, there were one or two physical issues for Yannick in that third set. But, of course, error strewn and, and physical issues or not, uh, Carlos was already up 3-1 with the break uh, at that point. Um, yeah. The main thing was, although uh, I made a Sinner a very, very, very tight, tight favourite, as in, like, I think both um, Steve Link and myself were chatting about it last week, where it was like, we just fancy Sinner 51 49, but it's super tight. Mm. It's just because of the form of the two players looking back over the previous six months. In fact, it kind of, they kind of, with the exception of the US Open, sort of post US Open, that the, the fall, albeit we knew it was only going to be temporary, of, of Carlos coincided with the rise of, of Yannick. Mm. Um, you know, Yannick playing the best tennis of his of his career and, and Carlos not reaching the heights that he'd shown in the previous two years. Both seemed to happen at the same time. And it wasn't like they were meeting each other on a regular basis. It wasn't like Novak and Carlos that were playing each other all the time or probably even more so uh, Yannick and, and Daniel. Um, they weren't mm. playing each other so often. But um, I think there was one meeting in, in Asia and that's about it until until this meeting now. But the the form of the two players was there was a gap, but then it was like okay, this gap gap is going to be significantly narrowed because mm. of it Indian Wells. Um, yeah, they, it felt like much more important in a way for, with, of course, for Alcaraz because he's oh yeah, form in the last six months hasn't been great, but yeah, so yeah, it makes it interesting. Are they going to both? Be keeping this up now uh, are they both going to be going for number one as well obviously uh yeah from... i mean it's a three it feels like a three-way fight for number one at some point this year um yeah it feels like that of course with with novak having a french open title win followed by a wimbledon final uh, i have venus williams on my screen right now um by the way it's obviously just about to get her match on the mm -hmm. way um yeah, it does feel like at some point those three are going to be pretty close. If they, if they, if those two, uh, Novak aside, in fact, if we throw Novak's form in as well, if these three players continue the form that they've shown in recent weeks, then it won't be long before the three come together pretty closely. Maybe even by the French Open. We might be going into that French Open going, 
it's a three-way fight for world number one and the person who takes the title will get it yeah i mean with carlos i mean it, it's good timing as well to get he's got his mojo back just before the clay clay season so i think that's clay is obviously where he wants to be doing well uh yeah yeah, I mean, he could have a disappointing Miami one way or another, and it'll mm. still be a step forward this yeah. this four weeks, if you like, compared to yeah. where we've been over the previous six months. Yeah. And if we can, you know, he's shown that 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 it might be just a conditions thing, but we're into a pretty good part of the season for him in terms of conditions, in terms of the clay. Mm. Uh, he's fine with the altitude. He's fine. At, uh, you know, it's it's not quite a Rafa scenario in terms of Madrid. You know, he's he's more than comfortable there with back-to-back -back titles against, you know, playing players such as Novak and Zverev um, the year before last, albeit last year, maybe his draw was a little kinder uh, in Novak and Rafa's absence. Um, but it was anything but kind, of course. I think he beat Novak and Rafa, didn't he, back-to-back -back before beating Zverev in the final. Saville is up a break, by the way, in the third set on Zhang. Per Zhang. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, still a long way to go yet. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just brought, brought to 30 30. Uh, yeah, I think also it's interesting because Djokovic is, he's made a decision, I think, to focus on the clay. Um, I think he'd love to win another French Open because I don't know what the record would be then if he, yeah, so he's won. If he, if, he got, if he got on, he, he got on, he's got three. Right. It's the slam he's got the least at. You know, most players would just love to win three grand slams. But, yeah, that's uh, it. So if, if if he wins it, then he'd he'd have four at each, which is obviously just four. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He had a four more each. If he won, if he wins Monte Carlo, he'll have done the Masters Tour, if you like, three times over uh, at least. Uh, he'll secure world number one for an, an incredible amount of time if he picks up those two titles as well. And um, then it's just Olympic gold. And then yeah. I'm not saying he's close to retirement, but there's just nothing else really to do in the sport. I would say calendar probably slams. for him. Yeah, not yeah I mean, and therefore probably never will. I mean, it, it's, it's, such, it's such a rarity. People were saying that when he just missed out in 2021, oh, we can do it next year. And I'm thinking that's not how it is in tennis. So this is such a an insanity. And I know he was close in 23 in so many respects, but but um, it's just you know winning back to back slams, especially when you've got Australia and the French being so wildly different um, mm. and so far apart in the calendar as well. That that that, that you know so. Calendar slam aside, aside, which is a year-long project, it's it's not like ticking things off, like I say, with the Olympics and so on. I think he definitely, well, if he's worried about like records and all this stuff, then I think he'd rather have, and it just as like a nice achievement to have the Olympic gold. Oh yeah, rather than the French Open because. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, it's. I looked through the stats. Actually, it was like his the, his winning percentages, all the Masters, the Slams, your World Two Finals, and then like it was like the Olympics is by far the worst one for him. Obviously, it only comes every four years, and it's it's not like you know there's only so many chances to get it. But it, it's just interesting because he's if he, he, he lost quite early, and well, he's, he's only ever uh, yeah, he's only got a bronze medal. Uh, he, that, and that was just the one time back in 2008, I think, mm -hmm. Beijing mm -hmm. Olympics. So, yeah, he's he's been quite disappointing since then in the Olympics. But, uh, yeah, this time I honestly think that's, that's what he's want. That's what he wants. And More than anything. He's obviously quite proud to represent Serbia as well. So throw mm -hmm. that in. Uh, you throw it in the, the bigger, you know, possibly the biggest point is that he's just never, never won gold, um, as you say. Um, but uh, yeah, it's I also I think it's like because it's for the players, like those those guys that actually are in with a chance of winning it, it is it's a huge thing for them, like almost like a slam or like a you know like a big event. But you know, it's still best of three, 
So it, I think in that way, it's some, and you know, it's more difficult in some sense because you know, in slams, you, the top guys, they usually, even when Djokovic goes down two sets, you, you're always thinking he's going to come back. How many times has he yeah. done that in a big slam? But then, in in these, uh, yeah, it's mostly just best of three. I don't think they do a best of five in the final anymore, do they? Um. And John's gone. <laughs> so, so forehand cross court from Wong, and Wong tries to go for the winner up the line with the forehand, but he hits it wide. Nagao wins the point. He's forty fifth. Yeah, 40 15 on serve. Okay. <laughs> no, they don't do best of five in the final, just in answer to answer your question. Not another not that I'm aware of. No, I'm, I'm sure it isn't. Yeah, they it was last in Tokyo they didn't do it. And I don't think they're gonna change it back, but you know. Personally I like that, but <laughs> I did you, yeah. Yeah. I I mean listen, the the argument over 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 best of five. Of course, the year, I mean, we used to have Davis Cup, didn't we? And, and several of the Masters like that. But I do think that's kind of dead in the water now that the best of three makes sense at those tournaments. But yeah, maybe it's a one one every four years match on a, on a, on a, on a, on a I guess on a Sunday, yeah. it's fine. Uh, Aditya is asking about the Sumit Nagal match uh, to watch it online. I don't think, unfortunately, it's, a, it's not on one of those two courts that you highlighted um in terms of being out watching if if aditya you're in india um what what channel is it tennis channel is it you said you think you can get it on oh i'm not watch uh sorry the miami open is showing two courts um the my miami open official youtube channel but they're not showing the nagal match i'm That's watching right. that on some uh, the <laughs> And also, ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's why you're so good, yeah. if you have a betting a site in your, yeah, country, then country, you might be able yeah. to watch it, okay, yeah, right. Um, but other than that, you've got tennis channel for that particular match for other, uh, for two qualifying matches, um, the Miami Open YouTube channel. Yeah, so that's court two. There is Kovacevic against Berg. So Zizou Bergs is on that stream. Okay, so Zizou Bergs is on that against Kovacevic. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is uh, Kopriva and Wolf. And Wolf and... is, well, I think Wolf was a breakdown in that set. Or I could be dreaming, I'm not sure. But it's on serve, although he's facing a break point at three all. So that feels significant. Wong, of course, is serving to stay in the match. Mm. Oh, pressure, pressure, pressure. I'm trying to give you some commentary. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It, yeah. Yeah, talk us through as many points as you can. Yeah, they're just still on the break now. But yeah, so Kapriva's taken that break. And I've got, oh, he did take the break, did he? Okay. And I've got Siegmund, uh, who's just about to start her match here. They're just warming up. Um, Sigmund, I think, uh, I think she's won three sets in a row, six love, um, in her qualifiers. Just, uh, the girl changing his racket there. I don't know what happened, but. Yeah. So obviously Wong serving second in this set means he's going to have a couple of pressure games, you would have thought. Yeah. So try and get Wong serves, first serve, just. Oh, it was in unreturned by Nagal, so 15 love. Yeah, he's going to want to bring out that big serve. Uh, he's going to need it more than ever right now. Yeah. Okay, nice one two from Wong. It's going well so far, 30 love. Yeah. And of course, a quick service game like that just puts the pressure back on the gal. See if he can. Oh, 
Nagao with a chip return and Wong hits it into the net. So is that 30-15? Yeah, 30-15 to Wong. Bergs has a break point in the first... Oh, no, he Oh, and... Yeah, Wong's up 40-15. Two game points. And yeah, so a bunch of other matches on now. Yeah, oh. we'll get away Venus amongst others. Venus is a breakdown already on Schneider. Zhang's got triple break point against Savile. Yep, I see that. There's still hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, one going too much, going for too much there. It's a double fault, but he's still got a game point 40 30. And that's a beautiful ace down the tee from Wong. So nice. he holds on. Five all. I mean, because Wong's got that serve in his locker, in a tie break, I would maybe fancy him to take it. And also because he's quite good at the second serve, um, hitting winners off the return. So... Let's see what happens though. Nagal might be able to break before we get there. Is um, Nagal moving okay? Aditya is asking in the chat. I think he's doing okay, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if Aditya is su suggesting that he has a particularly unusual movement. Uh, it says, yeah. is Summit Nagal moving his legs like he usually does? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether that's a, a slight on Summit and his movement or not. I mean, he's a no, he's a good. Well, he's very quick around the court, but uh, I haven't noticed anything. Anything unusual today? Yeah, but let's see. Oh, oh, but that was unusual. That was a big shank. <laughs> he knocks it right out of the stadium. <laughs> Nagal or Wang? Wang. Nagal. Sorry. Nagal. The three fifteen. Yeah. Kopriva has a game point for 5-3 as he's trying to take a step uh, forward to the round one proper. Mm. So and go. by the way, Tavel are back on serve, to all. Oh. oh, that was a lovely passing shot on the backhand from Nagao, who takes it to 40-15. Yeah, this is quite tight. <laughs> I don't know who's going to take it. <sighs> Second serve for Nagao. It's in. Oh, and it clips the tape and goes out. So it's 40-30. Can Nagal serve it out this time? First serve goes out. Second serve. And oh. And a short exchange there, but Nagal hits it into the net and we're back at Juice. So Nagal under a bit of pressure again. Yeah, especially from 40-15. Mm. Okay, first serve made. And he hits a winner there onto the line. So Nagao gets the advantage. So serving from Nagao, that can return from Wong. Wong's, oh, and then Nagao hits it long. 
So we're back to juice. Yeah, so these uh, big points. Yep, juice. Serve is wide from the gal. Now a second serve. It's in. Wong makes a return. Forehand from the gal. Oh, and Wong hits it cross court, but the gal tries to slide with the backhand, but he can't make it. It goes short, and so Wong has a break point, a really crucial point here. Yes. Yeah. Oh, serve. Oh, it must have been just wide. So second serve now for Nagao. I'm going to see Wong. Is he going to step in and... Oh, he smacks the return winner. And I didn't actually hear him, but I'm sure he just screamed, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or yes, or something like this. But yeah, so that's him up 6-5, and he's going to serve for the match. Well, will be really huge moment for him, because, I mean, I guess, I think this is his first qualifying of a Masters ever, so for him to make it in the first attempt would be pretty cool for him. Did he pick up, did Nagal pick up an injury earlier on this year in Dubai? In Dubai? Yeah, somebody, Aditya was suggesting in the chat. Uh, uh, it's fine if he didn't. I, I mean, I, I, oh, sorry. I'm not entirely sure if he did. If, did he? No, oh, so anyway, he's, he's fine in terms of his. He, in, Aditya's stuck on the on the leg movement today, anyway. Okay, yeah. so Coleman Wong is going to be serving for a place in the first round, which would be a huge step forward for him. Yeah, I'm just looking at his. Uh, yeah, so Wong, yeah, yeah, the only ATP Tour event that he's played so far was the ATP 250 in Hong Kong when he got a wild card at the start of the year. So, yeah, this is, he's been given a wild card here uh, into qualies and looks like, well, he's given it a good go. So it looks like he might take full advantage. He'll be serving for the match in a minute or so. Uh, yeah. Cole Beaver is serving for the match uh, right now against JJ Wolf. But he is love 30 down on his serve. So a few jittery moments there mm. for check. Oops. Oh. Wong hits the first serve in. Nagao hits the return that just clips the tape and dribbles over and he wins the point. So oh. Nagao getting a bit of luck there. Might need that luck. Oh, but a big first serve from Wong, and he brings it back to 15 all. So Wong, yeah, he'll be wanting to get all those first serves in. Venus Williams oh, welcome was... back. Okay, second serve from Wong. Nagao makes a return. Oh. Ah, yes. And then Nagao finishes it off. Yeah, that was uh, Wong going for the winner there, but it clipped the tape. And again, that was beneficial for Nagao, who eventually finished it off at the net. So 15.30. Two net cords in this set that already worked out well for Nagao. If you're watching on Twitter, and I look like we've got quite a big following there, please do give us a follow just by clicking the follow button uh, and at Talking Tennis TT. So anything but comfortable for Coleman. Yep, 30 all. So he's serving now. Let's see what happens. Okay. Big serve goes wide. It's going to be a second serve.
Oh, and it hits the tape and goes out. So a break back point for Nagao. 30-40, Wong serving to stay in this set. And hopefully... <laughs> Big first serve. The girl makes it back and... Yeah, Wong doing enough to win that point there. So back to Juice. What was that? <laughs> Was that, did I hear something there? Mm, I think so. I thought it was a dog. <laughs> no. Okay. I love dogs, but no dog on this stream today. Okay. Um, Savile Zhang, uh, they are at juice at 2 3 with Savile hanging on a little bit there. Uh, as I said, Venus Williams has broken back, so she now leads 3 2 on Schneider. Stern is through. Big forehand win across court for Wong. He now has a match point. First so match. match. So, first serve here. He gets it in. And the gal hits it wide, and Coleman Wom drops the racket, hands to his face. That's him qualified for Miami. For the first Do we know who he's going to be playing? Or is no, because it. Yeah, you know, I mean, well, just uh, we know who he. There'll be a few different players that he could play, but. Because they're yeah, because they're up against qualifiers, yeah, and then he just gets dropped. So All right, we'll we'll find out in a couple of hours. Safulin Tabulo, he could play another qualifier. He could play Ogiele Sim, Laszlo Jere, Altmaier. Not too many big names. So yeah, right. Fabian Marijan, yeah, and then Koboli. So all the qualifiers have got good good draws. Like O'Connell, yeah. Mitchelson, and. Cash in, so like no seats there. That's pretty interesting, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, all winnable. I mean, probably he would go into most of those as the second favorite, but they're all you know, they're all winnable. It's not like he's got Carl. No, or yeah, no, you maybe yeah. want to avoid, avoid what you ever seen, but he's not exactly been in a great spot oh, recently. Really? So, I mean, honestly, I mean, <laughs> maybe he'd want to play him <laughs> Holman against Felix, and it's probably 50 50, just depends on what, yeah, you know, yeah. On yeah. Uh, Eddie, thank you very much, especially as I'm sure it's getting pretty late into this whole night. Yeah. Um, so thank you for joining us today. It was great to hear you talking us through Wong and Nagal in particular, but also all of the matches that have been getting underway in Miami. Plenty more action to come. Uh, fingers crossed Eddie and I will be crossing paths again uh, over the next few days. Um, but either way, a big thanks for coming on today. Yep. Thanks for having me. I'll just give one final roundup on some of the latest scores and some of the results that have already occurred. We'll begin with the women's first round, where Yuan has beaten Blinkover in straight sets. Uh, Peyton Stearns is through, also in straight sets. Wang, Wang beating uh, Baptiste, also in straight sets. Schneider and Williams are on serve. Saville and Zhang are into a deciding third set, uh, with them both on serve. Uh, Sigmund is already down an early break on Krunic which is not good for my bracket because I have Sigmund going through, but nobody cares about that. Towson and Dolahide are on serve and plenty more matches to come, including matches featuring Wozniacki, Townsend and Lynette, as well as uh, Simona Halep's big comeback against Paola Bedosa later. Uh, we might even cover that on the channel. I haven't decided yet, but make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe in case we do cover that match among others. And on the men's side, thank you as well once again for Eddie for talking us through the latter stages in particular of Wong's three-set dramatic win over Nagal. Stabot built it through in straight sets and Copriva has just got the job done against JJ Wool. Yep. And uh, Zhang's just gone up a, a break 4-2 against Savo in that final set, so she oh, might yeah. actually get a victory. There we go, the final. <laughs> we'll see though. Finally, get that rut that she's been in uh, figured out, and of course, she was four love down to Savile in the first set, but has really, mm. at least in terms of the scoreboard, dominated ever since. So we'll see if she can get the job done now. Now the pressure goes out back on her shoulders. Uh, but yeah, one more time, Eddie. Big thanks for dropping by today. Yeah, cheers. And yeah, hopefully, 
season. Even I hope so too, Eddie. And to everybody else, you know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.